everybody. In uh, this video, I want to um, take you into other sort of little secrets of the process. Like, uh, and I hope you enjoy uh, seeing uh, how the paintings are done. Now, let's watch it. I'm going to try and explain and show how I do this uh, little painting here of a cat jumping. He's really on his way and it's one of the techniques I use. I um, did uh, this time a drawing beforehand but I don't always do that. Sometimes I uh, just uh, draw as I go. Um, I'll show you I'm using very, very tiny brushes and then I'm going to make uh, this little cat come alive with different materials that I will show in the way I'm using mainly inks, Colorex inks are very good, but the most important is Sennelier. Sennelier, they are mostly the best. They are full of uh, shellac and it gives them a shiny effect. It's full of pigments. When I'm at this point, I will decide to choose uh, which uh, type of color that will go with the painting. I'll first try to outline the background in a color Maybe it should go here with some yellows or greens uh, for the start. I'll just start with uh, a background uh, on um, like a, um, in yellows. Why not? With an old, um, I'm using very old brushes. I'm not very careful with them, but uh, then I will uh, get into it. Open this uh, thing. For the background, I'm proceeding in a way that is uh, painting in reverse, so I'm going to clarify what it's all about. It, it makes the color species of here appear in uh, different colors so then I can delimitate the outline of the figure of the cat and uh, slowly we uh, get to see that cat in the, in its glory if I can say I paint on wood so what is good about wood is especially if you add like me oil afterwards is that it drinks the oil and it accelerates considerably the time of uh, drying and um, it has um, a noble uh, aspect too. A lot, of friend, a lot of people are afraid of using oils, but uh, you should never be afraid of anything at all. And not afraid of uh, oils at all. There's a big, big thing about oil painting but uh, you should use everything as I use everything. Like, uh, never fear and always try. This is going to make it a little bit alive uh, with uh, some ink. This ink has another particularity. It's very, very good because it's watercolor based, so it spreads and it goes in all directions. Uh, it spreads, uh, it's fluid, it's full of pigments. It's the one thing you are going to look for if you're buying some uh, inks. What inks have the most pigments in it? Because you use, use less ink and everything will be brighter and most, mostly more beautiful. 
I'm trying to explain because I got many messages of people asking how I make my paintings, but uh, most of it, you know, is very improvised and I can't, uh, I can decide at any moment, at the very last moment, what color I'm going to use. It's like in life. I don't try to make too many plans because something comes always in the way, you know, <laughs> like uh, it's a, uh, you have to do, then if you have a plan, you have to do something else. What do you do then if you plan so hard? Well, so you adapt, always adapt. So this gives a little bit of shading. I was said I was going to go into greens, but I don't know, maybe. Um, well, there are two ways of having green in painting, as you know. Well, you can uh, use uh, green directly. I've got a nice, nice green. A one that I use in oils. This is a Sennelier ink. Uh, not ink, an oil. Um, Sennelier is always the best. I'm not saying this because I'm French and it's a... Uh, French brand, but uh, it's the best in terms of pigment and quality. I can go in another way. Uh, this is fabric I have, uh, and also, like, uh, I can also use blue, also from Sennelier. Uh, this is the, an oil that will give a green impression, but with a mixing of different medias. Like, uh, therefore, the yellow that I use as a watercolor base would be mixed with the blue. So this is one thing. And then I'm going to outline. I'm going to decide with this color. I think, I think, I think I should go into, uh, into pure green, in fact, pure dark green from Sennelier. So I'm going to just uh, open this uh, green and put it directly pure on the painting like this. I stick a little bit of green straight from the tube, like in this corner right here. For the moment, I've got my green here. I leave it there until you know this oil anyway it won't dry it's safe there the thing is uh, when you start a painting you want to uh, you try not to how can i say you make your you put yourself in a position where you can't go any way backwards you did something and then your Painting becomes like a puzzle. You try to solve that puzzle. So then I can add uh, different things. I've got my little box where I have all sorts of uh, hearts and stars and things and glitter. And then I will force the light of the yellow with uh, another yellow, a Senegal uh, yellow from Senelier too make sure that the hands that I've drawn will stay nice. So this is going to be done by outlining them with the shellac ink. This will uh, act like a small barrier, uh, which will prevent the other liquid colors from getting in and invading. So I'll do like this directly from the tube it's a bit wild, I know, but uh, uh, it's maybe not uh, what you've been told in art school or in uh, manuals, but that's how I, <laughs> well, I would do things uh, every time a little bit different. And uh, But um, this is uh, nearly, I oh, see, this is nearly empty. So, um, Okay, when when you want different colors, you want to change. So, well, it's like uh, you remember what Picasso said, like if I don't have red, I use blue or maybe the reverse. So, well, I outline with uh, the liquid here, like this. 
and then I will do the same here. As nothing shown, I'm setting an order of different liquidy things that will mix into the final uh, final frontier, the final melting. I don't know how can I say je suis français. N'oubliez pas. I'm trying to explain in English as much as I can. For the um, thing, I'll do the same thing around the, the little cat's ears. And I will come back to it a bit later. So it's all in progress. So I got a little bit of pressure because as it's all liquid, I have to act fast. I don't have time to do something else then I will want to outline the cat himself absolutely and precisely precisely sorry and then I will use another ink always thinly I use uh, one of my favorite colors which is a uh, raw sienna I use it like this I use it like uh, like this as uh, well straight from the tube and uh, go around and um, the drawing having been done before, it will just, I can add a little bit here, and uh, yes, and uh, like this. Well, of course, it takes a little bit of practice to work like that. It's a bit like spray paint. Sometimes uh, what comes out is not exactly what you planned. Um, that's what I said about planning. It doesn't matter at all. It's like, uh, just like, uh, uh, yeah, you have to adapt permanently your, to what is happening on the painting and not adapt to your plan. It's not like, uh, like forget a little bit about planning too much and just like be into life, the life of your painting. You want to make things easy, not stress. If you start stressing about the result or what uh, what will be or what people will think, if it's not exactly as you wanted it in the first place, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you take pleasure in what you do, and your joy will be transparent in the painting. If in the whole painting, if you have fun. People will see it, of course. Then I'm going all around. I'll do a whole thing about collage and uh, all different ways you can do collage. Uh, because my way with collage is using it as if it was a sort of uh, stained glass technique. You see these little collage pieces for uh, color or calligraphy. But not always. It's a, a, it's a sort of decoration with collage. Then when uh, when the collage appears, how can I say it helps giving life to the whole thing? But it's not essential. It's, then I can say something about texture. This is achieved uh, with uh, the painting with uh, the, the collage underneath but on this one there is not too much collage underneath and the, the, the effect is uh, uh, the collage is uh, mainly inside the character in this one so that's what can happen is that I want sometimes to have uh, more um, more texture and then I do this um, by using glitter or glue or uh, sand or uh, textile or whatever sometimes I stop there and then I try to get a feel get another idea I look at the painting don't um, sometimes I feel I need to add another character and then I wait for it to dry and add something. You want to work as soon as it is ready um, and uh, to try to use 
a little bit, just a little bit of water and spread out uh, the colors you've just put, like, and so that the liquidy things that we've prepared can mix together. It's a bit like a sort of cooking exercise, like, uh, that's why I love cooking as well. Like, uh, well, not only because I'm French, but... Uh, um, uh, and uh, still, you notice the green is still lying in the corner, but it's going to change everything. It's appearing now in a sudden color. I can even decide at some point to just leave it that way. It's an option. And uh, what you want is to, to take everything into consideration and broaden your options, not uh, um, make them more narrow. If I want, I can do anything I want. This is the way it's starting to appear. I'm spreading the shellac around with a little bit of water, but you can use um, many, many types of medium to do this, of course. Not necessarily medium, you can use... Uh, it's like uh, whatever you feel like could be done must be done. It reminds me of uh, what Antoni Tapies used to say. Painting should be seen as an experiment, should be seen as an adventure. A painter should be an adventurer. In my view, you could always, you should always do something which is very, you, you can try and make, to make things look like your, your, if you want your own cat, you want to use different different techniques. Of course, you can make also a cat portrait. Uh, you're playing with your imagination. You're trying to make things uh, appear as they go, as they appear. And it's a question of feeling. Uh, I hope this is clear for you. Well, it's a... Uh, Slowly things appear, as you can see. And um, then the choices of colors and movement. It's all up to you, of course. And um, mostly you're going to get an idea as you go. It's like just like life. It's by living that you learn most, not by thinking about what you're going to do. It's like, uh, at one point, whenever you think, you need to, uh, well, uh, get going. It's uh, the, main, uh, the main ingredient would be the start. Don't look at what goes wrong as a mistake. You can call it destiny, let's call it destiny, you can also say that uh, this is serendipity, it happened for a reason. You accept it, this is, uh, this is how it's happening. You make things happen. I want to bring some of that, uh, some of that uh, color, which is a mix of brown and yellows in a color where it is not and uh, with my sort of uh, uh, my timer going uh, my timer being uh, the painting guiding me and also this liquid drying like uh, so I have to be fast and decide and so, um, somehow it's going good I think it's going then you have different options in this piece. The, the collage is still visible, but in uh, some of my pieces, it disappears completely, the collage. Uh, sometimes I don't even use collage at all. And here, uh, well, you will see and judge if it looks nice to you. I know that sometimes the artist is the worst judge that there is. Like uh, sometimes you don't like it, you will 
feel if you like it or not. So chances are that you should um, consider that if you like it, other people might like it too, but it's not the point. If other people like it or not, it's not the point. The point is during what you are made for. In this time of painting, if you want to do portrait paintings, do portrait painting, do whatever you want. That's what art is about. You should do whatever you want. All right, this is going not too bad. Okay, so now I'm going to bring on that uh, what I was telling you about. Uh, I'm going to ch change my uh, brush, take another one of my very old brushes, and it's going to be a brush which I'm going to use uh, to bring in the oil. See, I left that uh, oil painting in that corner, so I'm going to use it now, and it's going to change. I'm going to bring it down a little bit into the yellow. So that it uh, takes some uh, character, but uh, it will mix in a way that is uh, discreet. I'm going to um, I'm going to define a zone in which in which I allow um, this uh, oil to be uh, for now and just put it a little bit uh, I know it's uh, counterintuitive and if you ask anybody it will say to you don't uh, when people tell me you shouldn't do this then my answer is always uh, why not if it doesn't work you can always use white and paint it all over again so here's a little green and uh, I spread it gently it's looking nice well at least it looks good to me right here and now we'll have all uh, the, all the places now cover and remember that the surface below is wood so this uh, wood is going to drink up uh, all the inks and uh, it's looking exactly like I wanted and you can see the cat appeared you try to caress it, look at this little cat, and try to imagine what the little cat right here wants. What do you want from me, you little cat? Uh, okay. So, for now, I'm going to say this is the basic technique to start the background and you can have uh, an insight in how I proceed to start at this stage. Next time I will probably try all sorts of materials and uh, materials and uh, put it on little pieces of paper, paper and uh, you will see exactly. So for now, thank you very much for listening to me.